Alan Palanda is a Toronto-based photographer, filmmaker, and YouTuber who works with luxury brands like Longine watches, Mercedes-Benz, and Lamborghini. Much of his work is based around the urban environment, and his love of architecture really shines through in his images. He has a very distinct editing style with dark moody tones. It's a style that I like a lot, and judging from his success on Instagram, it's a style many other people like too. He's a fantastic artist, and I'm a big fan of the content he creates. So, the first thing I should say is, Alan has his own presets for sale. So, if you're looking to get the authentic Alan Palander style, you should think about picking them up. They're very reasonably priced, and I'll leave a link in the description. I'm sure they'll be very useful if you're into colour grading. So here we are in Lightroom. Um, picture of the inside of a Range Rover here, kind of similar to the shots you might have seen of Alan's where he's taking pictures inside of Mercedes or Lamborghini or any other fancy car, top brands that he works with. Um, so hopefully we can get a similar look using this photograph here. Um, so I should probably say I don't think Alan will edit his photos exactly the same way every single time. It's going to depend on the conditions that you're shooting in. So this is going to be a rough overview. We're going to get it pretty accurate um, with this picture here. But you're going to have to take into account that if you're shooting at a different time of day to when this was pic picture was taken, that you might have to play around ever so slightly, probably with the temperature slider. You might need to be a little bit warmer or a little bit cooler than what I'm showing you here today. Um, so let's get on with it. Now, I've actually already done this edit once to make sure that I'm getting the, the look that we're after. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type in the figures and the, um, type in the figures here to get the, the, the look that we're looking for. Um, so you can just follow along and I'll explain a bit about why I'm doing what I'm doing. So the temperature is, images are normally fairly warm so we're going to put that at seven six zero zero and then tint we're going to go for minus four so it's ever so slightly over towards the greens there the exposure um, obviously this is going to be different as well depending on if you've got an underexposed image or an overexposed image for this one I'm only going to go up a fraction not much more than that and then we've got contrast and he has quite contrasty images so we're going to put that at 58 and then we've got the highlights here which brings his highlights down he very rarely has pure white in his image so we're going to put that at minus 92 then the shadows we're going to open them up slightly 62 and then we've got the whites 28 and we've got the blacks at minus 50 so he crushes them blacks and really takes it down so it's uh, got a lot of contrast there in the image um, so the next one doesn't have any texture um, but clarity I know for a fact I've heard him talking several times how he doesn't like how Instagram over sharpens his image when he posts them it has a bit of a digital look so he nearly always brings that down um, so he goes for minus 22, we'll say. And um, yeah, that's kind of the opposite of what I'll normally do. I normally add a tiny bit of uh, clarity. I like it to be sharper, but obviously this is Alan's preferences. Um, no vibrance, no saturation. Now for the tone curve, he has a kind of relatively simple um, S curve, adding some more contrast in. So. He also has a fade on his image, so we'll bring that up slightly. And then just under and then up here. And then he brings his highlights down again, I think. So they're actually slightly grey rather than full on blown out whites. Let's just see. You have to kind of play around with the uh, tone curve a bit to give it what you want we might have to come back and fix that a bit later but kind of similar to what we're looking at okay so let's go through the hues of each individual color so red is minus 41 the orange is minus 5 yellow minus 88 greens are minus 61 
one. The aqua is plus 10. And then the blues are left alone. And purples are plus 20. And the magenta is plus 30. And you can already see we're sort of pushing those kind of orange tones into the image here. Um, saturation now. Reds are minus seven. Orange is positive 31. Yellow is minus 18. Green is minus 98. And as you see there, that takes out the kind of very kind of bright yellowy green of the trees there outside the window of the car and brings that more in line with the kind of darker tones that this image sort of has, this kind of style has. Um, so that's to do with really taking out pretty much all of the saturation out of the, the, the greens there. The aquas are minus 74. And then the blues are minus 100. Purples are minus 100, and the magentas are minus 100. And then the luminance, we've got minus 15, zero for the orange, we've got minus two, and for the green, we've got minus 78. And then the aqua, we've actually got plus 15. And then the blue is minus 16, minus 15 for the purple, and then zero for the magenta. So we're getting kind of close there to um, the image. If we have a little look at the, take off the uh, hue, saturation, and luminance, see where it was, kind of a very green image. And then once we've been through each of them, it's bringing in those kind of reds and blacks that you sort of has kind of a, a black with a kind of golden hue to it. Um, now split toning. So split toning can sometimes be a bit kind of misleading. You look at his pictures and you're not really sure where he's gone with it. Um, I think he has it something like this. Um, but again, he might change this up depending on uh, the conditions that he's shooting in. If he's going for a kind of a colder look, if he's in a kind of winter scene, then if he's at kind of you know a sunset over the city or whatever. So just bear that in mind when you come to do this. You might need to change these round ever so slightly to get the look that um, you're looking for. So his highlights, we're going to go for 25 and the saturation on that is very subtle, it's only 10. And when you're doing um, split tone, and you really do want your saturation to be very low, it's only adding uh, ever so slightly adding um, those colours to the highlights. If you really push the saturation you get some crazy effects and it'll look absolutely insane. Um, and then his shadows, he tends to have, that's one, nine, seven. So he has a kind of bluish green to his shadows in a lot of his um, photographs. And sometimes that's more towards the greens and sometimes that's more towards the blues, um, but they're in there. And then the saturation on that is just nine. And then Lastly, he likes to add uh, a bit of grain to his photos. I'm not really sure if grain turns up in Instagram. Um, I think you really have to kind of push it quite hard to see it on uh, an Instagram photo. Um, but if you're gonna print it out and you want the grain to be there, uh, it's not something I'm a massive fan of actually. I think it kind of sometimes look a, looks a little bit like noise or whatever, but it can disguise noise if you've got a noisy uh, image there. If there's lots of noise in the shadows or whatever and you wanna add some grain. And it can also give it a kind of a more uh, classic look, I suppose. So let's go down to the grain and we'll put this at grain amount 20 to 
the size 38 and the roughness 22. It's a few days later and I'm putting together the video for the edit that I've done and looking at the image in Premiere it's really saturated and I'm thinking to myself is that something I've done with the original edit or is that Premiere playing around with the color slightly so I've reopened Lightroom and it looks like it's probably a combination of both of us um, it's definitely a bit more saturated in Premiere but if I look at this edit particularly the skin colors on the hands here you probably don't want somebody's face um, looking those colors so I'm just going to cool it down a bit take the saturation down a small amount and also just move the temperature over into the cooler side slightly that looks a bit better it's probably going to play a bit different on your screen because as I say Premiere is uh, changing the colors around a little bit but if you come to the edit and you're following along and you think oh people are looking a little bit orange in this then that's all you need to do to fix it um, and actually it's a good idea when you're editing to take some time away from an edit come back a few hours later or whatever double check just to make sure that it's looking the way that you want it to look um, you can sort of get a kind of snow blindness when you're concentrating on an image for a long time so yeah just go away come back look at it in another light um, so yeah that's the edit hopefully you enjoyed it hopefully you get something out of it um, and as I say Alan's got his own preset so go and check them out I'm sure he'd appreciate you picking up a pack or two of those presets. Okay, take it easy.